my thing is, 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 is y'all need to, what, what happened? On August the 21st of 2019, this summer, I want to have a grand opening of the FDMG building, Team Pan-African headquarters. I want to have a conference. I want music. I want fashion show. I want seminar. I want yoga class. I want African language. I want a musical concert right across the street. We got a big park. We want to rent that out and do a big park. A big celebration with food and festivals and activities for the children with over 100 vendors. It is a tour of the inside of the school. You don't get to see as much of it as I would have liked you to because the lighting is not on in the school. We have to get that turned on. I have to go to the electric and gas company on Monday. Tennessee, October 5th, so we got back-to-back -back Memphis. Back-to-back -back Memphis. King Kong Consciousness, Notorious RBG, most requested black scholar in the world, not America, not South America, not Asia, not Europe, not Australia, I said the whole damn planet. You're talking to the most requested black scholar on the whole damn planet, 10 years and counting, you can't stop me. Run those donations, where those donations at? cash.me slash dollar sign FDMG school. Run them donations. Cash.me slash dollar sign FDMG school. It's a movement. Umar Johnson's war on black boys. The shockumentary he doesn't want you to see. This short documentary will illustrate how Umar Johnson's threats of physical violence are consistently directed at black boys, black women, and black men, and that his rhetoric reveals a deep-seated hatred for black women, black girls, and so-called black male thugs. Furthermore, this documentary will illustrate how Umar Johnson has continuously issued threats of physical violence against people who have spoken out against his dangerous and hate-filled rhetoric while encouraging his followers to act violently on his behalf. We are in the middle of a war. I want all my Dr. Umar supporters, Team Ifa Tunde, suit up, buckle up, grip up, because I'm done with the dumb shit from the haters. Umar Abdullah Johnson, a.k.a. Jermaine Shoemake, was born on August 21st, 1974, in North Central Philadelphia. Umar Johnson, the self-proclaimed Prince of Pan-Africanism, has a torrid history of threatening people with physical violence. On September 28, 
2017, an article written by David Satendre entitled Advocate for Violence Against Bad Cops to Speak at JCSU was posted on Fox46Charlotte.com. The article reads in part, a controversial speaker pushing for violent retaliation against police brutality will speak in December at Johnson C. Smith University. Dr. Umar Johnson has advocated for people to shoot and kill law enforcement officers in cases of police brutality. I choose my words very carefully, as you know, but it's time for one of us, when we get into a fight with one of these police, to take that damn weapon and blow the brains out. And I say that in honor of every black man, woman, and child who have been beaten or murdered by police. Umar Johnson's 2017 promotion of murdering police officers is comparable to Umar Johnson's 2013 promotion of murdering so-called black boy thugs. A lot of boys who got the thug energy, anger. Thug energy is normally anger and pain. That's all it is. I know because I do therapy with them thugs. And once they see I ain't scared of them, then we can have a conversation. And fellas, I want to be clear now. When we go back to take over the community, because we're going to have to do it, gentlemen, you can't expect the cops to fix this, because they started it. But I want to be clear, and know some of us love our children, but some of our children are so far gone that we're going to have to put some of them to sleep in order to take back the neighborhood. Some of y'all don't want to hear that because you don't live in reality. But I'm telling you as a psychologist, I'm not going to be able to psychologize all of them on the corner. Some of them going to sleep for good. To be clear, when Umar Johnson states some of them going to sleep for good, he is stating that these black boy thugs need to be murdered. But I'm telling you as a psychologist, I'm not going to be able to psychologize all of them on the corner. Some of them going to sleep for good, for good, for good. In 2019, Umar Johnson promoted the murder of 10 percent of black boys. I'm saying that to say this. I've never taken a life. God forbid. I hope I never have to. But if we're going to take them streets back, we got to admit something. I'm talking as a psychologist. Mm. Some of our young men, we've let them go so far for so long, they're no good to no damn body. Mm. There's people walking these streets where we're going to have to put to sleep. Mm. In other words, you might have to create violence to end it. Mm. It will be a cataclysmic altercation between black men and some of our youth. Most of our youth, we can get them. But there's some of them. They ain't going without a fight, mm. and they're going to have to be put to bed. It's oh, a shame. It ain't their fault. You understand? But you have a population of unreachables. The white man wants us to think they all unreachables. Uh-uh. 90% are reachable. 10%? We're going to have to have a civil war with them, mm. and that's facts. Don't give your guns back. Buy some more. Don't give your guns back. Buy some more. Don't give your guns back. Buy some more. Umar Johnson encourages black people to buy more guns in preparation for his black civil war against 10% of black boys. This would mean that Umar Johnson wants to murder one out of every 10 black boys in the United States of America. How are we gonna stop the violence? Then you got to get in their face! Then you got to get in their face! Then you got to get in their face! Then you got to get in their face. face! You see what I'm saying? So yes, there got to be a collective and we got to go to the streets and I'm all for that. It's the only way to do it. I'm not going to be able to psychologize all of them on the corner. Some of them going to sleep for God, for God, for God. You may be wondering, how is it possible for Umar Johnson to have such a negative orientation towards black boys? The truth of the matter is that Umar Johnson's general attitude towards black children is extremely negative. Umar Johnson has referred to black children as nigglets, which is an extremely demeaning racial slur. Apples don't far, far from trees. When I see kindergarten students competing over who got the best sneakers, who had more money spent on them for Christmas, you're not born with that. You learn it. When I see first graders calling each other ugly, you too black, you too yellow, your hair too nappy, your lips too, right? right. They weren't born with that. They learn it at home. We are breeding nigglets. That's exactly what we're doing. While speaking about black girls that have been raped and molested, Umar Johnson said the following. Girls who are molested go on to develop thottish personality disorder. Thottish personality disorder. This is my disorder. I made it up. Thought. We all know what a thought is. That hoe over there. 
Umar Johnson, a self-proclaimed school psychologist, clinician, school principal, and family therapist, has such disdain for black girls that have been raped and molested that he defines them as hoes. A hoe is a sexually promiscuous female, a prostitute, a whore. And they start over-sexing to deal with the trauma. They start over-sexing. They'll start having a lot of sex, trying to drown out the trauma of the rape and the molestation. And they develop thoughtish personality disorder. That's when she's quick to have sex. She's quick to have sex. She get trains ran on her, multiple orgies, multiple head jobs, multiple orgies, multiple head jobs, multiple orgies, multiple head jobs, thoughtish personality behavior. A lot of black girls and black women, black women suffer from thoughtish personality disorder. Umar Johnson had this to say about black women who have been date raped. And black women, this is why I tell black, don't play around with sex on the date if you're not giving none up. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. I've heard about too many rapes that took place because you want to play. You want to entice the man with sex. You want to arouse him, but you don't plan on having sex. Don't play with a man sexually. And you don't even know him. You don't even know this man. You enticing him, touching his genitalia, allowing him to touch your genitalia, kissing you on the neck, getting undressed. If you know you're not having sex, why y'all in the bedroom? Don't play. Our daughters love being alone with men they don't know with their hot asses. Our daughters love being alone with men they don't know after the frat party with their hot asses. While speaking about the abandoned buildings that he hopes to turn into a school for black boys, Umar Johnson made the following inappropriate comments. We're going to have to wash them clothes because some of them are going to come in with the same dirty drawers on. Oh, we're going to have to wash them clothes because some of them are going to come in with the same dirty drawers on. Oh, we're going to have to wash them clothes because some of them are going to come in with the same dirty drawers on. While speaking about disciplining the black boys that will be enrolled at his non-functioning school, Umar Johnson said the following. See, at FDMG, there won't be no out-of-school suspension. Why would I send a black boy being raised by a single mother back home to a single mother? If she could do something about it, it would have been done. It's my job as a black man to deal with him. And because we are an independent school, I don't have to follow the rules of Detroit Buck. See, I'm going to let your son know from the gate. You see all the brothers in here? You get out of line, my brother. Your mom coming here one time saying you was clapping off at the mouth. We got a black room in the back. You understand? See, we ain't going to have no discipline problems. Because we will pound your damn chest in, little boy. Because we will pound your damn chest in, little boy. Because we will pound your damn chest in, little boy. Brothers and sisters, this is how I will teach to your children at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. This is how I will teach your sons at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. And if you have a problem with the way I talk, and if you have a problem with the way that I teach, and if you have a problem with the way that I preach, if you have a problem with my vernacular, if you have a problem with my oratory, if you have a problem with my black pride and my black consciousness and my black divinity, if there is anything about Umar Ifa Tunde, a.k.a. Jermaine Shoemake, a.k.a. the Prince of Pan-Africanism, if there's anything about me that is unsettling to you, Keep your children in that white-ass public school. Keep your children in that white-ass Catholic school. Keep your children in that fake-ass black hotel school. Keep them where you want to keep them. But if they come in the FDMG, damn it, they're going to get a Marcus Garvey spanking. And we will pound your damn chest in, little boy. Umar Johnson's hatred towards police officers, towards black boy thugs, towards black girls who have been raped and molested, towards black women who have been date raped, and towards the black boys that he once enrolled at his non-functioning school is reflected in his views about black parents. If you're raising black children, you cannot afford to be lazy, but a lot of us are. And I'm just going to be real honest here tonight. A lot of us are very trifling and a lot of us are very lazy. Neither adult in their life gives a shit. Excuse my French. That's the worst combination you can have. And a lot of our children have that combination. They have a lazy parent as, at home and they got a lazy teacher in school. 85% of the kids I test have nothing wrong with them. Nothing. They lazy as hell and the parents are too. Even when I was principal, I had to fight black parents. I want my son tested, Dr. Johnson. For what? Learning disability. Your son is in the third grade. What do you mean? I think he got a learning problem. Well, the boy only been in my school for one year. 
in the school he came from, nobody learned. They ain't made AYP since AYP started. So why don't you give me a chance to work with your son? Uh-uh, I want him tested. I'm not testing him because there ain't nothing wrong with him. His problem is your trifling ass. Get out my office. I don't want the kids coming back home to you because you part of the problem. You got Willie Lynch all in your system. White Jesus on the wall, teaching your kids to be multicultural, daughter looking like Beyonce, a head full of blonde ass weed. What the hell I want her coming back home to you for? She stayed with me and the boys stayed with me. But the problem is you cannot teach what you do not have. And many of our children learn to be undisciplined by their undisciplined parents. For every black mother in here, don't you ever, 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 black sister, ever, in the rest of your life, go to your son's school with your damn pajamas on. Umar Johnson's hatred toward single mothers is expressed in many ways. On several occasions, he has threatened to rip their fingernails out. And he got the IEP this year in first grade. Can I pull your fingernails out for signing permission to get my little brother tested, Sister Chrissy? Can I pull your fingernails out? Umar Johnson has consistently referred to black women as hoes, hood rats, maggots, etc. You better be bringing more to the table than a pretty face and some hot cookies, okay? I'm very serious about my life. I'm very serious about my work. I'm very serious about my mission. It's not a game no more. I am now a role model for black boys. I have no time for conscious thoughts. I have no time for conscious hood rats. A hood rat has nothing to do with how much education you have. A hood rat has nothing to do with what kind of car you drive. A hood rat has nothing to do with what type of social status her parents come from. A hood rat has nothing to do with how much money she makes. You could be a million dollar hood rat. You could be a $50,000 a year hood rat. You could be a hood rat that's an engineer. You could be a hood rat that's a medical doctor. You could be a hood rat that own your own business. A hood rat has nothing to do with social economic status for Dr. Umar Johnson. Priscilla, hotel hood rat, and you got a weave in your damn head. Oh, Lord have mercy. And she got a weave in her head. You done came to the wrong place, babe. I just blocked Kiki a second time. I blocked her. And she came back. She's a hotep hood rat of the Hebrew tradition. I blocked Kiki twice. Let's see if Kiki come back again. I'm going to ask my Hebrew brothers to get a hold of your hood rat. I am now a role model for black boys. I have no time for conscious thoughts. I have no time for conscious hood rats. Umar Johnson's hatred towards black boys, black girls, and black women is also projected towards his donors. I called PayPal before I started using PayPal for the school fundraising. And I didn't want to use PayPal, but lazy Negroes kept talking about why I just can't make an online donation. Take your lazy ass to the post office and get a stamp. So far, we raised $250,000. I'm gracious, but I'm not content because I know y'all got a lot more to give me than some $250,000. When Darren Wilson killed Michael Brown, white folks gave him $300,000 in three weeks for his defense. And Dr. Umar Johnson is trying to build a state-of-the-art school for black boys that y'all all know I need. And after six months, I only got $250,000. Trifling ass black people. I'm going to call it like I say it. And I don't care if you get offended. We can handle that outside. I'm getting sick and tired of getting texts on my cell phone for black folk talking about I've donated like they done. <laughs> you gave me $25 and you think you free now. We got to raise $2 million. Your ass ain't done. I better get some more and some more and some more and some more until we hit the goal, brothers and sisters. That's the way we're going to have to do this. Trifling ass black people. I'm going to call it like I say it. And I don't care if you get offended. We can handle that outside. 
Umar Johnson's promotion of physical violence against police officers, against black boy thugs, and against his donors is indicative of his tendency to make physical threats against those he disagrees with or those who criticize his violent rhetoric and his scamming of the black community. Here are some examples. I'm a deal with Papa Smurf. I'm a deal with that little dirty nigga. I heard you albino. I'm a handle your ass tonight, pussy. You ain't getting away with that shit. You should have never came for me, nigga. I never fuck with your little dirty broke ass anyway. Look in my face when you talking to me. This ain't no WWF, nigga. Who the fuck is you, the conscious Hulk Hogan? You the conscious Hulk Hogan? Papa Smurf? Motherfucker, you look like Tattoo from Fantasy Island with your stupid ass. Speak your speech, nigga. Speak your speech, nigga. Speak your speech. You see that date? August 21st, bitch. That's when I was born. 821, nigga. Bring it. Bring it, motherfucker. Little dirty midget. I'm right here, nigga. Come bring it. I'm right here, nigga. Come bring it. I'm right here, nigga. Come bring it. You said I got a little belly, right, nigga? But guess what? I'm comfortable in my motherfucking skin. I love who the fuck I am, nigga. Ain't no problems over here with the Prince of Pan-Africanism. I'm straight. Why the fuck you looking at my chest for, you pro-homo nigga? What you looking at my chest for? What you looking at my stomach for, nigga? You think I waste any time looking at your nut ass? I got a gut. That's all right. I can handle mines, though, homie. You can believe that. That's right. Your ass lifting weights because it makes you feel equal. Because you insecure. So you got to be all big and muscle bound. So you feel equal. Well, guess what? You can lift all the weights in the world and you'll never be 6'3", nigga. You can talk about my gut all day, but I'm sexy with mines. I'm fine. I'm cool in my skin. Don't you ever speak my name in vain. I'm talking to you, Seti. Friday night, what you going to do? I'm calling you out. A debate on black leadership. Ain't going to be no sucker shit. It's going to be children and mothers in there, and we going to keep the shit gangster. You got some personal shit with me? We can handle that shit out back. We can handle that outside. I know the conscious community got y'all lazy. Are they running around this intellectually masturbating old ass information? Like Papa Smurf. That Papa Smurf shit ain't going to get us in the way. That Papa Smurf shit ain't gonna get us nowhere. You feel me? Hold on. Yeah. Nah, I got this. I got this. I... Hold on. Yeah. Nah, I got this. I got this. I, I answered the call, nigga. The other day, Sabir Bay, I'm telling you to your face. It's personal now, bro. You came to the culture connection when I was in Chicago. You came to the culture connection when I was in Chicago. Told people I didn't speak to your little midget ass. First of all, you ain't but three feet tall. How the hell I'ma see you? Bitch ass. You's a hater. But when weak ass dudes like Tyreek Nasheed and Boyce Watkins speak my name in a negative vein, I got the air cats out. That's all this is about. You know you deserve this shit, Macadocious. Calling that man crispy? There's some, if you want to say something about the brother, say something about the brother. You don't pick fun at his skin tone. Every time you look in the mirror, you see a cracker, nigga. So you got to go extra hard because you're trying to prove to yourself that you a black man. I ain't got that problem. You poking fun at all black women who are richly melanated. And you poking fun at all black men who are richly melanated. I'm melanated, bitch. When I look in the mirror, I see a black man. When you look in the mirror, you see a cracker, nigga. You don't pick fun at his skin tone. I'm going to deal with that little dirty nigga. I heard you albino. Young Pharaoh a lot. He uh, dropped Oh, the... I ain't speaking on him. Oh, okay. I ain't okay. speaking on him. Okay. dirty ass yeah. getting the words. Okay. <laughs> Stuff I know about Boyce Watkins, I'm not going to put that out there right now. Because I'm hoping y'all keep my name out your mouth and we go our separate ways, bro. But that boxing match, oh, we can do that. In fact, where's Sarnetta at? Since y'all call Sarnetta the Don King, tell Sarnetta to call that bitch up and see if he can get his ass in the ring for 10 rounds. But if you want to talk that gangster shit and you want to go to the streets with it, okay. When and where? When and where? I want to see this. When and where? So I can knuckle your ass up. You want your ass beat? When and where? Now that bitch Tyreek Nasheed. By the way, Flex, I heard you said you pulling up. I want to know when you pulling up. I called your ass out for 10 rounds. You didn't respond, brother. Get your fat ass in the ring for 10 rounds since you so gangster, you bitch. You could bring Moist Joyce Watkins. Moist Joyce Watkins as your partner. We want to do a handicap 
debate max. Remember back in the days, fellas, when we used to watch wrestling growing up back in the fourth and fifth grade? This ain't no WWF, nigga. Who the fuck is you, the conscious Hulk Hogan? It'd be like Junkyard Dog and Tito Santana versus Randy Savage. I remember the handicap match. Who the fuck is you? Randy, Macho Man, Seti Savage? You's a fucking nut, nigga. You's a fucking nut. When you gonna release the tapes, Batiman Nashi, Batiman Tyreek. Chicken tenders. Chicken tenders, where you at? I'm right here, nigga. Come bring it. Hold on. Yeah. Nah, I got this. I got this. I, I answered the call, nigga. I do not have a criminal record. I do not have a criminal record. I have never done time in a prison or a jail. But these four individuals have went too far. One of them is William Clay. I need this motherfucker's address. I need this motherfucker's address. I'm going to go see him this weekend. Enough is enough. Number two is homosexual Gerald Palmer. Find that pop that coward's address. Work or home. Find it. I'm pulling up on him. Mukasa Africa. He's been hiding out lately, but he started the whole shit. He a little bitch ass nigga from Philly. We used to work at the same charter school. Kepper a charter school. Okay. Find that bitch ass nigga because he started this. I'm going to see your bitch ass. Okay. And another one is Andrea Stewart. She's the one on YouTube. Anti Afro Spengali. Anti Afro Spengali. She's in California. I want to pull up on her when I go out to Cali next month for the parent training. Uh, Lenore Honor. I'm tired of this bitch nigga too. This is the, the weak ass dude who got nothing but YouTube videos about me on YouTube. L E N O R H O N O R. I had enough of him too. Monty Woodgrain, I'm gonna fuck him up too. So if you could get Monty's address, it's time for me to see Monty too. Monty Woodgrain, I'm in your ass. Lenore Honor, I'm in your ass. William Clay, I'm in your ass. Gerald Palmer, I'm in your ass. Anti Spengali, I'm in your ass. In Mukasa, Africa, I'm in your ass. I'm tired of the bullshit. William Clay, Gerald Palmer, Mukasa, Africa, Lenore Honor, Monty Woodgrain, Andrea Stewart. Hold on. Yeah. Nah, I got this. I got this. I we are in the middle of a war. I want all my Dr. Umar supporters, Team Ifa Tunde, suit up. Buckle up, grip up, because I'm done with the dumb shit from the haters. Shout out to the Goonie Goons who've been reaching out to me. Kansas City Goonie Goons is ready to do what they need to do. My Philly Goons is ready to pull up on him. The mythical Goonie Goons that Umar Johnson is referring to would be the same so-called black boy thugs that Umar Johnson wants to murder. A lot of boys who got the thug energy. Shout out to the Goonie Goons who've been reaching out to me. I know, because I do therapy with them thugs. Shout out to the Goonie Goons. But I'm telling you, as a psychologist, I'm not going to be able to psychologize all of them on the corner. Some of them going to sleep for God! Shout out to the Goonie Goons. I am a representative of Team Infants and Tuesdays for Principal Mr. Dr. Umar Johnson. That's right. My name is Big Squabble, and I'm a representative of the Central Illinois Team of the Goonie Goon Goons. Goonie Goons. The white man wants us to think they all unreachables. Uh-uh. 90% are reachable. 10%? Goonie Goons. We will have to have a civil war with them. Mm. And that's facts. I want all my Dr. Umar supporters, Team Ifa Tunde, suit up, buckle up, grip up, because I'm done with the dumb shit from the haters. Hey, Mr. Dr. Umar Johnson, we got them, bro. You don't gotta say no more. The Goonie Goons, man, everybody out of Bone Gap and Kish Cash Gear. Yo, we ride the Chicken Knacks and all the Goonie Goon Goons. We doing this. Team Miffin and Tuesday. Looking forward to seeing all my brothers who ride with me. My Goonie Goons who ride with me from Shy. The brothers in Shy ride hard. They hit me up. They say, Doc, if you have any problem, call this number. We not playing. You understand? We will do time for you. We will die for you. If you ever have a problem when you come to the city, you hit me up. So I got like 50 goons. But I'm telling you as a psychologist, I'm not going to be able to psychologize all of them on the corner. Some of them going to sleep for God. Well, you worried about why Mr. Principal Dr. Umar Johnson ain't made his school yet. You know how to fucking make bricks? You know how long it takes to make bricks? 
by yourself. Fuck wrong with you. The nigga gotta make fucking bricks. He gotta teach. Teachers teaching. You know how hard it is to teach teachers teaching? So you can go out and teach? Nigga making bricks like brick bricks. Not cocaine brick. Brick bricks. I don't even know. Sand, dirt, and the other stuff that go on the brick. And you make it. He had to make brick bricks. Then he got to teach teacher teaching. Y'all hate no the man who the foremost voice for black folks everywhere where people live at. We ain't going for that shit, man. Lee nor honor, we got to get his ass. Lee nor honor, we coming for you. Oh, we coming for you. Oh, we coming for Lee nor honor. Oh yes, Gerald. Excuse me, his name ain't, his name is Reverend Girl G I R L. Reverend Girl Palmer, we coming for you. Reverend Girl Palmer, we coming for you. William Clay out of D.C., we coming for you. Umar Johnson's father had this to say about Umar's threats of physical violence. Okay, Umar, I know you know where I am. This is uh, Frederick Douglass, Marcus Garvey, Future Academy. Something you began you solicit the funds for, and you are supposed to be fixing. This is your place. This is what you about. You ain't about that thug life. You ain't about running around here calling people out. You ain't about getting no goons to get with other people. The Goonie Goon Goon Squad is pull up time. You're supposed to be an administrator of this facility right here to teach young men, or boys rather, how to be men, first and foremost. You got no time for the drama you putting on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. This is supposed to be about Black boys get the best that they can get from you. Is that what they're getting from you right now? That you jumping around, talking about getting names and addresses and phone numbers from people so you can get with them? We're going to do what we got to do. Enough is enough. Is that what, is that what uh, you showing them the best example of right now? I figured I had to come out here to remind you of your mission. Your mission is not to be running around claiming to get goons or threatening to run up on women. Anti-Afro Svengali, she's in California. I wanna pull up on her when I go out to Cali next month for the parent training. Threatening to run up on women who you call hoes. Handle that co and tell ho. Handle that co and tell ho. Get off the YouTube, man. Get off the Instagram. Cut the nonsense. Stop talking foolishly about exterminating 10% of our boys. There's people walking these streets where we gonna have to put to sleep. Mm. In other words, you might have to create violence to end it. But you have a population of unreachables. The white man wants us to think they all unreachables. Uh-uh. 90% are reachable. 10%? We will have to have a civil war with them, and that's facts. Don't give your guns back. Buy some more. Some of them going to sleep for good! It's embarrassing to see you out here acting like you haven't even gone through junior high school. It's embarrassing to see you being memed and diminished in your stature because of the way that you're showing yourself. It's embarrassing. You should be embarrassed. Monty Woodgrain, I'm in your ass. Lee Nor Honor, I'm in your ass. William Clay, I'm in your ass. Gerald Palmer, I'm in your ass. Anti Spengali, I'm in your ass. In Mukasa, Africa, I'm in your ass. People that follow you, they're not gonna be able to sustain your project. Not if they think like you do right now. 
that you need to go around and harass people, threaten people, and try to act gangster. That gangster stuff played out, man. And if it is around, it's for the young boys. You're 45 years old. What are you trying to prove? What are you trying to prove? You want people to think you're a gangster now? And you got a school here? You got a build. You see these buildings? These are your buildings. And you run around here trying to act like a gangster? A thug? This is what your kids are supposed to learn, how to be a thug? Instead of how to be an educated, powerful, young black man? Our principal is Dr. Umar Johnson. He's going to teach us how to be a thug. You're supposed to be an example. You're supposed to be the best that we got out here. You're supposed to be. You got a doctor's degree, a doctor degree, 16 years of college or schooling. You're supposed to be better than this. I want all my Dr. Umar supporters, Team Ifa Tunde, suit up, buckle up, grip up, because I'm done with the dumb shit from the haters. Who in their right mind with a doctor degree is going to go back and assemble a bunch of thugs, supposedly, to pounce on some people because of what they said on the internet? Lee nor honor, we got to get his ass. Lee nor honor, we coming for you. Oh, we coming for you. Oh, we coming for Lee nor honor. Oh, yes. Gerald, excuse me, his name, ain't, his name is Reverend Girl, G-I-R-L. Reverend Girl Palmer, we coming for you. Reverend Girl Palmer, we coming for you. R-E-V-G-I-R-L. Reverend Girl Palmer, we coming for you. We coming for you. William Clay out of D.C., we coming for you. Because you're acting like you was born and raised in the streets, which we both know isn't true. I know from experience, because my parents were married and because my father participated in my education, the schools wouldn't dare try to put me in special education. I was chosen to be one of those who will be given opportunities when many of my classmates were not. Many of them are dead. They're in jail. They're still on the corner selling drugs. Why? Because I was given an opportunity that they were not given. Monty Woodgrain, Down Syndrome, Lemonhead, pull up team. Pull up team. Because you're acting like you was born and raised in the streets, which we both know isn't true. Get together, Umar. Get together, man. I'm telling you, as your father, I'm telling you, as a black man, you might be impressing all these other clowns, all these wannabe gangsters, or used to be gangsters, but you ain't impressing me. And you ain't impressing nobody who is a gangster out here, for real, for real. Because they be telling you to cut this foolishness out. So Reverend Girl Palmer, uh, he, he should be worried. <laughs> Reverend Girl Palmer should be worried. Lenore should be worried. Monty should be worried. Some kids right there, some of those might be the kids that come to this school. But you want them to know you as the doctor that curse people out online, that threatened to get their goons, that talked about exterminating kids just like him, that disrespect people. Get together, man, for real, because you're losing it. And when I say it, I'm talking about these buildings. You're going to lose all this. Umar Johnson's long history of threatening people with physical violence is well documented and reveals the truth that Umar Johnson is a fragile human being who lacks human connection and self-discipline. He is a slave to his own delusions of grandeur, narcissism, and the fantasies that he continues to echo in his own shattered psyche. At this point, there is a significant percentage of Umar Johnson followers who follow him simply to witness the tragic train wreck that continues to crash and burn. Each day, more and more critics post YouTube videos to discuss Umar Johnson's erratic behavior, senseless babblings, predatory orientation towards single black mothers, severe paranoia, and scamming of the black community. Day by day, his critics increase in number while his support continues to dwindle. It has been over a decade since Umar Johnson began his school scam. In 2010, Umar Johnson posted the following Facebook message promises in 2010 to begin laying the groundwork for the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Pan-African School for Black Boys, specializing in learning disabilities and disruptive behavior disorders. This will be a private school, and yes, 
you will pay in order for your son to attend grand opening 9-11-2013. This is chess, not checkers. A decade later, and Umar Johnson continues to perpetuate mail fraud, wire fraud, and affinity fraud against black people while collecting donations for a non-existent school with no business plan, no board of directors, no faculty, no staff, no renovations, no running water, no HVAC, no electricity, and no financial transparency. In July of 2017, Umar Johnson said that he had collected $700,000. How much was raised and what's the status of that? $700,000 and the status is we're still looking for a school and the status is my start date for FDMG will be 8-21-18. In October of 2017, Umar Johnson said that he had collected $700,000. So now what we're doing with the money we've raised, which is approximately $700,000. As of today. As of today. Okay. In November of 2017, Umar Johnson said, we need another million. Can we get another million? So Baltimore, what's up Baltimore? We need another million. Baltimore, can we get another million? He later stated, we almost got one mil. I need y'all to call them NFL and NBA athletes. Tell them Dr. Umar need a mill. We almost got one mill. We need another mill. In November of 2018, Umar Johnson stated that he had collected $750,000. Since that time, Umar Johnson has not provided an update concerning the total amount of donation money that he has received. Some of you may argue that Umar Johnson used the donation money to purchase the abandoned buildings in Wilmington, Delaware. The critical question that we should ask is, how much money did Umar Johnson use to purchase the abandoned buildings? Online records show that Umar Johnson only spent $400,000 to acquire the abandoned buildings. The next logical question would be, where is the rest of the donation money that Umar Johnson collected? Since February 9th, 2019, Umar Johnson has been collecting donations to renovate the abandoned buildings. Over a year later, and no renovations have taken place. So where is all the money that Umar Johnson collected since February 9th, 2019? How much has he raised since February 9th, 2019? How much money has he raised since he started collecting donations? No one knows because there is no transparency. I must also add that Umar Johnson has stated that he started collecting donations in 2015. But the truth of the matter is that Umar Johnson has been collecting donations since at least 2009. I just want to go on the record to tell my truth about Mr. Johnson and um, how I was defrauded by him uh, for $200 back in 2009. The school thing came up and I was like, you know what? That's really what we need. Like, we do need our own school. Like, our boys need that. Like, our young men need that. So, like I said, this was in 2009. Um, and he was campaigning for his school then. So, all that four years, five years, no. I gave him $200 in 2009. Many more people have spoken about donating to Umar Johnson's school project. A recent YouTube comment reads, Damn amazing. I will admit, I was hyped about the FDMG and donated in support back in 2009-2010. Scammed. Not only has Umar Johnson been collecting donations since at least 2009, he has also consistently rejected supporters who offered him free help, free labor, and free services that Umar Johnson could have used to open a school years ago. My father owns a shitload of land, like acres. I don't know the actual acreage, whatever, whatever. Anywho, it's air property, meaning it can never be sold. No one can ever sell it. It only can be passed down through family but it's tons of land there so my uncle was like hey i will give this man as much land as he wants this is a great idea like, it's already born um it's already war systems uh propane farm and my uncle told him like hey you know i'll give you a hundred year lease meaning you can do whatever you want to do and my uncle was actually going to donate like labor and stuff like whatever needs to be fixed up because he's a contractor um 
they exchanged messages from 2009 to, I want to say, 2010. They went back and forth for months, and then they were supposed to meet up. And every time they were supposed to meet up and actually go down to see the property, see what needed to be done, see what he needed, it was always an excuse from Umar Johnson. Oh, I'm out of the country. Oh, I'm this. Oh, I have this, this. Always an excuse. It got to the point where he just stopped replying to messages from my uncle. Like, altogether. Fast forward. Now you're, now you have the St. Paul's College, and now you have like this big fundraiser. When you could have had as much Laker acres, much land, the houses if you wanted that were already there, like those could have been like turned into like residential homes for the staff. So you were getting all of that for free. But you need $2 million to buy a school. My uncle was like, hey, this guy is a scammer. This, he is not real. He is not serious. You know that my uncle was giving you all of that land to do whatever you wanted to do, to build whatever you wanted to build. You could have had a school in 2011. As a videographer, a person that does film and videography, and as a computer science technologist, I, uh, I offered my services to him as a staff member or a potential staff member. So I wrote to him because he comes through Houston a lot. He's got a big base here in Houston and okay, he comes through the Shrine of the Black Madonna. So I wrote him. I said, brother, I'm from Houston. Uh, I noticed that you really don't have somebody doing your film professionally. I think that you can get more uh, financially from people if your product was a little tighter. And uh, I would like to be able to help you at no charge. Not that I mean, you know, that you can't pay me, but I believe in what you're doing. And as if you if you needed somebody as a technologist to teach, I'm working on my master's degree right now. If you need somebody to teach at your school in the future, I'm willing to do so. I started asking him, does he have a staff and does he have a plan? What is this projected year? And I can help you with all the things that you really need because it seems like you don't have a staff put together. And, you, know, you know, but uh, I kept going and asking questions about, you know, not how he's spending the money or anything like that early on. This was like close to 10 years ago, probably eight years ago. I'm like, I'm just trying to help you, brother, fulfill the dream because this is for our children. Before all the egotistical, narcissist videos, all this stuff. Long story short, I looked up and I was blocked. Dr. Umar Johnson, Jermaine Schmack, whatever, blocked me. On February 9th, 2019, Umar Johnson announced that he had acquired the abandoned buildings in Wilmington, Delaware. He also stated that the next phase of his school project was renovations. So there's three stages in this process. There's acquisition, there's restoration, there's operations. I'm hoping somebody is watching this today. I'm hoping we have an electrician or someone who knows an electrician. I'm hoping we have a carpenter or someone who knows a carpenter. I'm hoping we have a licensed plumber or someone who knows a plumber. I'm hoping we have a roofer or someone who knows a roofer. I hope we have a painter or someone who knows a painter who's watching this and they're going to say, hit up Dr. Umar and tell him that you are a licensed plumber. Tell him you are a licensed electrician. Tell him you are a licensed carpenter. Tell him you are a licensed painter. Tell him you are a licensed roofer and that you're gonna come and fix the roof for free as long as he paid for the materials. Tell Dr. Umar you're gonna come and rewire the whole school. He just gotta pay for the material. Tell Dr. Umar you're gonna come and do the whole plumbing system. You're gonna fix anything wrong with the plumbing system. He just gotta pay. For the material. I'm hoping HVAC. I need HVAC. I need HVAC. I'm hoping somebody with HVAC will text me and say, Doc, I live in Philly. I live in Chester. I live in Delaware. I live in Maryland. I live in New York. I live in Connecticut, brother. I'm licensed. I will come down there and do your HVAC work. When can we get in the building, Doc? On February 28th, 2020, I received the following email message. 
Brother, I wanted to send you an email about my recent experience contacting Dr. Umar. Now, before posting this information on your YouTube, I'm asking you to give him one week from today. I'm a plumber in... I work for a very reputable company. I decided to reach out to Dr. Umar via email. I can send you the conversation. I have a lot of HVAC friends and co-workers besides myself who are willing to go down to Delaware and get his plumbing and HVAC together at no charge. He just needs to buy the materials and get a local master plumber in HVAC tech to pull the permits and draw the isometrics prints. Umar asked when I could come to Delaware, and I said for the most part any time, but he has to secure the permits and materials. I have not heard back from him. I believe it's a scam. I'm willing to volunteer one week of my time with other licensed tradesmen to help him, and I don't think he is for real about opening a school. What do you think, bro? I responded saying, hello, brother. Please send me the conversation that you had with Umar when you can. I will tell you that there are plenty of professionals who have tried to help Umar. Run Brother offered to create the FDMG website for free. Umar ignored him. This was years ago, and Umar still does not have an FDMG website. The plumber then sent me the email conversation that he had with Umar Johnson. Dr. Johnson, I'm a plumber that lives in... I'm not telling how to run your school or business, but I've watched a few of your videos and I have an idea. You need a massive call to trades. The company I work for pays us 36 hours a year to volunteer our services. I would be more than happy to help you with the plumbing at your school. Second, I myself have thought about starting a plumbing school. Whenever you come back to We Can Build, this is my email, is my number. I know a lot of HVAC guys, obviously. However, you have to find a master in Delaware to pull the permits. Umar Johnson responded, I'm here today, brother. When can you come to Delaware and take a look? The plumber replied, wow, I really had no idea you were here. I can come to Delaware whenever for the most part. But here is the thing. Have been building my whole life for the most part. I know how it goes. Time is everything. If you can get a bro to draw up the isometrics of the buildings and get the materials, me and a couple of plumbers from here and call a few more to the cause, we can do it in a week. I have 36 hours volunteer time, 40 hours vacation time, and weekends after that. So the sooner you can get the drawings, I can bust a move down there. If I have to do the drawings, I would come on a weekend and then go back after the materials are in place. I get off at 6 p.m. today and live in... Umar Johnson did not reply, and the plumber sent another message to Umar. So I spoke to the company I work for about taking time off and a few HVAC guys. Do you have a property manager to let us in, or will you schedule us to come out in between cities on your tour? Let me know. I'm so tired of people talk mess about a bro who has a dream instead of trying to help you however they can. That's what's wrong with us now. We can't stand behind a bro or sis and help them, not hurt them. It takes all types. On March 6th, 2020, I sent the following email to the plumber. Did Umar Johnson ever contact you to make arrangements for you to go down to Delaware and look at the buildings? The following day, the plumber replied, no call, no email, no nothing. The plumber then sent another email stating, I'm so disappointed. I did want to believe, but he is a fraud. It's not my responsibility to call him and beg him to work on his dream for free. I offered because I wanted to help. That's like me telling you a crew of HVAC install techs and a couple of plumbers will redo your home for free, but buy the materials and get someone to pull the permits. I spent the last week looking over Delaware's plumbing code because each state is a little different. This is the company I work for. It's not a fly-by-night company. It's official. I'm one of the few brothers who work there. But people have to know. You should do a show telling people about the brothers and sisters who offer to help Umar, and he doesn't take the help, but takes money. So here we have a plumber who was willing to work for Umar Johnson for free. The plumber was willing to recruit a team of plumbers and HVAC specialists who would all work for free. Did Umar Johnson accept the help? 
Did Umar Johnson coordinate with the plumber so that renovations on the abandoned buildings in Wilmington, Delaware could begin? No, he did not. If Umar Johnson was serious about opening a school, he would have accepted the help, coordinated with the plumber, and scheduled renovations on the abandoned buildings in Wilmington, Delaware. Despite being offered free plumbing and HVAC services, Umar Johnson has denied the help while continuing to collect donations for renovations. Despite collecting over a million dollars in donations for a non-existent school and without gainful employment, Umar Johnson has become nothing more than a homeless cyberbum, a virtual vagrant, a digital destitute. The irony is that Umar Johnson's school scam has been in effect for over 10 years now. And the scam itself has become a ball and chain that shackles Umar Johnson to the fantasies that he continues to echo in his own shattered psyche. Umar Johnson has become a slave to his own deluded mind and is oblivious to the truth that his life has become a cautionary tale of how fame, greed, selfishness, lies, deceit, mental disorder, and various addictions can, in fact, destroy a person's life from within. Know this, the walls of justice are closing in on Umar Johnson, and perhaps this will, in the end, be the path through which he can receive the proper intervention needed to climb up and out of the muck and mire that is his disgraceful and dishonorable life. So, I have three possible suspects for the murder of my Philadelphia brother, rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. I have three. Number one, and these are in no order, no suspect is of more interest than the other. These are in no particular order. You are listening to the Prince of Pan-Africanism somewhere within the ghettos of North Central Philadelphia. The NBA, as a multinational corporation, is a suspect in Dr. Umar's investigation. The National Basketball Association is a suspect in Dr. Umar's investigation. That's right. The goddamn NBA is a suspect. As soon as I said that, Mama Oya blew my cell phone off the stand. As soon as I named the NBA as a suspect, Mama Oya, and now the winds is coming. Soon when I said the NBA, Orisha Oya blew my phone off the stand. That's not proof that it was the NBA, but that's damn sure some good evidence. That's not proof that it was the NBA, but that's damn sure some good evidence that soon when I mention the NBA, the ancestors blow the cell phone off the stand. I just wanted to point that out. I just wanted to point that out. I just wanted to point that out. Did y'all see what just happened, brothers and sisters? Did you see what just happened? I've been talking to y'all for how long? How long I've been talking to y'all just now? How long have I been talking to y'all just now? And soon when I mention an NBA as the first suspect in Kobe's death, my cell phone get blown off the stand. That's not proof. It's still debatable. But it's a good piece of evidence. I keep telling you, consciousness over coochie, politics over punani. I keep telling y'all that. Consciousness comes before coochie. I'm coming. Let me get up. Wait a minute. <laughs> All right, take your time, man. Take your time. Let me turn this heat down. My baby was sleeping in the bed. Got to go way off. I'm coming. Let me get up. Wait a minute. <laughs> All right, take your time, man. Take your time. Let me turn this heat down.
my baby was sleeping in the bed. Got to go way off to the kitchen. <laughs> A lot of boys who got the thug energy, anger. Thug energy is normally anger and pain. That's all it is. I know, because I do therapy with them thugs. And once they see I ain't scared of them, then we can have a conversation. And fellas, I want to be clear now. When we go back to take over the community, because we're going to have to do it, gentlemen, you can't expect the cops to fix this, because they started it. But I want to be clear, and know some of us love our children, but some of our children are so far gone that we're going to have to put some of them to sleep in order to take back the neighborhood. Some of y'all don't want to hear that because you don't live in reality. But I'm telling you as a psychologist, I'm not going to be able to psychologize all of them on the corner. Some of them going to sleep for God! I'm saying that to say this. I've never taken a life, God forbid. I hope I never have to. But if we going to take them streets back, we got to admit something. I'm talking as a psychologist. Some of our young men, we've let them go so far for so long, they're no good to no damn body. There's people walking these streets where we going to have to put to sleep in other words, you might have to create violence to end it. It will be a cataclysmic altercation between black men and some of our youth. Most of our youth, we can get them. But there's some of them, they ain't going without a fight. And they're going to have to be put to bed. It's a shame. It ain't their fault. You understand? But you have a population of unreachables. The white man wants us to think they are unreachables. Uh-uh. 90% are reachable. 10%? We're going to have to have a civil war with them. And that's facts. Don't give your guns back. Buy some more.